In this FreeMFX tutorial I will show you how to create custom swirly velocity field that will be used to advect millions of particles and how to render those particles as points by using the Arnold renderer point primitive. We are going to use this displays geosphere and its vertices to generate swirling velocity voxel field. This placement is animated so that we get a dynamic effect that changes over time. To do this we will need a Noteworks, so let's create it in the scene. Now we need to create a voxel field by using the initialize grid node. This node will create an empty voxel grid with user-defined channels. We will only need velocity field so we can disable the smoke channel. We don't need lots of detail, so I'm going to set all three sizes to 300 and grid spacing to 4. This will result in a voxel field that has 75 voxels along each axis. Voxel grids can be visualized by using the display grid node. So let's create one and for now just display the voxel grid bounds. Ok, now since the initial grid position is at 0, 0, 0, we will need to move this grid so that the geosphere with animated displacement modifier is placed inside the voxel grid entirely as we are going to use it to create velocities. Voxel grid can be positioned in the scene by supplying the transformation matrix and I am going to create position helper and use object info node to pass the helper transformation matrix into the grid TM input node of the initialized grid node. Since the transformation matrix contains all the information about position, rotation and scale of the helper, our grid will inherit those properties directly so we can easily place it wherever we need it. Now, before proceeding, let's take a quick look at the math used for this tutorial. To explain you the idea about generating swirly velocity field, I have created a very simple scene with a pyramid and exactly the same setup that I am using in this tutorial. The operation we are going to use to create a swirly field is a vector product or cross product. Both words mean the same operation. The cross product of two vectors is also a vector, but such a vector that is perpendicular to the plane those two vectors form. One simple example is the coordinate axis where x and y vectors are the xy plane and z vector is perpendicular to the xy plane. Finding the direction of the cross product can be determined by the so called right hand rule. As you can see, vector A cross vector B results in vector C. However, B cross A results in vector C that points in the opposite direction. Keep that in mind. The two vectors we are going to use are the vertex normal and vector that connects vertex and helper. As I move the helper around the scene, you can immediately see the result of cross product. This operation gives us a circular field around the vertex. In this case, input vectors do not need to be normalized but output does as its magnitude will change with the distance of the position helper, helper from the vertex. If we normalize the result of the cross product, we can see that the vector length remains the same. That's what we need. Back to our setup, where instead of one vertex, we have geosphere with many vertices. For each voxel in the grid, we will need to get voxel position, closest vertex on the geosphere and vertex normal. First, we have to create a read voxel node to access each voxel and its position. For each voxel in the, vo in the grid, we are going to pass its position to the object test node that will find the closest vertex on the surface of the geosphere and to do that, we will set it to vertices mode. For now, we will use normal only from the closest vertex but we could also use the average from user defined number of vertices, which I'm going to use later. Object test node will also output vertex normal, so we now have all components that we need to solve our task. We have voxel position, closest vertex normal, and direction from vertex to voxel. Now, to calculate the vector product of two vectors, we will use a cross product node. And we have to connect direction to the A input and vertex normal to the B input pin. Direction pin will output vector that goes from voxel center to vertex and as I've said earlier, 
we need to normalize the output and set to scale scale to 3. With this scale we will control the magnitude of the velocity that we are going to write into the voxels. Now when we create the vo write voxel, you can see that it will be connected to the position but we actually want to connect to the velocity pin so we write to the velocity field and now we can connect read voxel and write voxel through the voxel pins and display our velocities inside the grid you can see that we already have some swirly swirly field now we're going to create a new tab where we'll work with spines and particles first we need to create some particles that will be anchors for the voxel tra trail splines I will use a simple J node, set velocities to zero as we don't want particles to have any initial velocity. Those particles will need to be created only once at frame zero, so both time start and time end must be zero. Set birth rate to 30, which will generate 30 particles in total. Drag the output and create location object node. A geosphere object and change location type to volume. This option will position particles inside the volume of the geosphere. To actually move particles to new position, we need to create position node and connect, of course, the position pins. And now we can finally create voxel tray node. This node requires particles which will be used as origins of splines that will grow along velocities inside the grid. Thus, we need to create get particle group node to access particles and their positions at each frame. I want each spline to have different color, so we'll need a random node. Change pin type to flow 3. And of course, we need to connect particle group with the random node. For the random node, enable show as colors and connect the random color to the spline color. And now you can play with colors and choose whichever random values work for you. Now for a little bit cleaner uh, layout we can delete this connection that we've uh, created in the first place. Even if we delete it you can see that virtual connection is still present because of the random node that connects those two nodes. The node works knows that particles from the get particle group are to be fed to the voxel to spline as well. Now the trail shape will greatly depend on the direction type and stride but for this scene I'm using the sub steps option and stride of 0.5. Currently splines are very short and we can lengthen them by increasing the trail length value. We can try by increasing 50, 100 but 200 will work here just fine. Now when all this nice and colorful, we can see that some swirls have really small radius and I want them to be a little bit bigger with less abrupt changes. Now to, to change this we need to go back to the first tab and object test node and use output averages option. As I'm increasing the number of max, max vertices, the spline shapes are changing quite dramatically as we're taking more and more vertices into the average. The more vertices we average, the smoother grid velocities will be and we can even use the max distance to reject, reject all vertices from the search that are further away from the voxel which allows us to completely control evaluation. Now that we have splines, what's left to do is to generate particles on those splines. Create spline gen node that will generate particles into the first particle group. Second particle group is reserved for spline sources and if we would be generating into the same group there is going to be a loop that ends up in millions of splines and particles in just a few frames. Particles will be generated each frame throughout 400 frames. We have different generation modes and I'll use random that will place particles randomly over the spline length. Count of 1000 will generate a nice dense particle cloud Lifespan is set to 200 so that particles slowly disappear throughout the animation. As we can see, those particles are static, they don't move yet. Now, the particle advect node will be in charge of advecting particles along the voxel grid velocities. So, what is the advection? 
is a process of moving quantities through the voxel grid by using stored velocities. FumeFX simulation uses advection as a crucial part of the simulation, and we are using the same principles here to advect particles. Update type will be velocity, and I am going to set blend to 50%, which allows for an even smoother particle motion throughout the grid. I have created a memory cache for those particles, so now we can see the results. There are millions of particles, so make sure that you don't have too low maximum particles limit inside the NodeWorks simulation parameters. And of course, plenty of memory to cache all those particles throughout all, the, all those frames. To see a bit better everything, I'm going to set up rendering with Arnold. First of all, set the particle group to render as point, and from the settings menu, Arnold point options, I will set the point scale to 0 0.05 and rendering mode as sphere. Changing the point scale here has advantage over changing the particle size and this change will not trigger re-simulation of the nodeworks. We will want to use particle colors for rendering, so for the Arnold user data export, enable color option. Now okay, we can open material editor and create standard surface material. For the base color, I will add user data RGB and we're going to type FXP color for the attribute. Now we can directly control particle color from the nodeworks. This is a really amazing general feature as the nodeworks can fully utilize Arnold render capabilities. I'm going to open up the Arnold render view so that we can see how the setup looks rendered. Now when we look at this simulation there might be a little bit too many particles, probably too many old particles, so I'm going to go back and decrease particle lifespan from 200 to 50, and I can increase the number of particles to 3000, for example. And now we have a little bit more sharper particle trails. Now, as I said before, if you want even smoother trails, we can increase the number of averaged, averaged vertices. So that's pretty much for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and let us know in the comments which topic you would like to be covered.